and I want to encourage you it is going to be wonderful it's going to be wonderful this morning okay so uh, can you hear the sound um, love joy says you can't hear the sound let's make sure the sound is clear how is the sound make sure that they all the mics are ready is it how is the sound okay can the people hear my sound now um, I want to make sure they can hear the sound okay good okay good so welcome welcome love joy Abigail Bethan God bless you I'm excited you've joined me this morning today for our daily boost um, we're talking about reigning in life as kings we're talking about reigning in life as kings and I want to encourage you get ready for something good something amazing and uh, the power to choose today I want to talk about my choice to reign we we'll talk about our choice to reign <clears throat> but before I talk about that I want to go through what I shared last week on Friday I hope that um, the sound is okay and uh, as uh, we wait for you to share with other people God bless you love you as we share with other people um, we want to make sure we can we can uh, give people some time to join me we're talking about um, being in a place where you understand how to reign in this life how you reign in life through one Christ Jesus uh, Nieder is watching from Jordan today yes that's wonderful we were talking about being each other we met kings and I said last week on Friday I said the problem is really knowing and accepting what Jesus has done for us knowing and accepting what Jesus has done for us and Romans chapter 6 and Ephesians chapter 2 it talked about that Jesus is triumphant he is glorified and he's enthroned in heaven and the Bible says we are also enthroned with him we are triumphant glorified and enthroned with him also we must enter the kingdom completely we have to come to a place where we have to accept completely what Jesus has done for us to reign in this life you are really in charge and being in charge is a matter of choice you make a choice you choose to reign in life Romans 5 17 declares it says um, that uh, those that have uh, those of us that have uh, received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in this life through one Christ Jesus shall reign in this life through one Christ Jesus and in Revelations chapter 1 verse 6 it says that he has made us kings and priests good morning Linda good morning Nisha he has made us kings and priests I'm so excited to join me today and um, we are making progress with uh, with a trip to uh, Indonesia and to Nigeria and uh, we are very thankful to God as a lot of you are started sowing and we thank God for that uh, you don't stop I know some of you make sure you're sewing to the right website because um, we had an issue somebody sewed in the wrong wrong place but we make sure we get it corrected so but God bless all of you for joining me today now so we are talking about today about my choice to reign my choice to reign you know we have a living hope the Bible says that hope does not make a shame because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit we understand what it means to have hope that is is in the now believing turning that hope to faith good morning pastor Victoria there are two categories of people we know in this world they are the losers and they're their choosers they are people that accept defeat and those that make a choice to choose and they are people that whine and people that shine the two categories of people those who reject abilities and those who respond to abilities we it's all a matter of choice good morning heavenly I'm very happy that you've joined me this morning all of you so um, we're talking about faith accepting as a, as reality what Jesus has made available to all of us what he has made available to all of us like I mentioned they are two categories of people those who reject ability and those who respond to abilities we have the doers and the non-doers we have the believers and the unbelievers good morning good morning Rosemary Morgan from Jamaica and so 
we are talking about understanding the categories of people. We have Kerry uh, Grogan, God bless you. Uh, we, we are talking about what it means to make a choice to reign in this life. The Bible says we shall reign in life through one Christ Jesus. But reigning is a matter of choice. One of the biggest problems in the church is that the church has confused the, the religious uh, setup of Judaism with the kingdom of God. They are two opposite forces. One of the things you find in the, the, the Judaic Christianity is this hierarchy so that you cannot make a decision without somebody being in the middle of it. We have one mediator between God and us, and that's the man Christ Jesus. So when, when, when God sends a teacher or people to us that come by the Holy Spirit to reveal that connection to us, that we can actually be in charge on this earth. I hope you're following what I'm talking about. Hello, Laurie. God bless you. I'm glad you joined me. So the biggest problem we have today in the church is when the, the believers that are born of God and are born again have made the choice. They have chosen to do something different from what God intended. The, the biggest problem in the church today is a lot of people have misunderstood Jesus. They have misunderstood him completely. They don't know who he is. They don't know why he came. They thought he came to start another religion or system of theology. No, he came to connect us back to the original purpose. The original purpose is to reign in life. We have to understand that God's original intent is for you to become a, a, a king in life. You reign through life through one Christ Jesus, the Bible talks about. And the Bible says, you are, in Corinthians, it says, you are rich, you are full, and you are reigning in life as a king. You are reigning in life as a king. It is a matter of choice, folks. It's a matter of choice. We have to learn what it means to choose to reign in life. I hope you're catching on with this. So, um, I'm going to go back and share with you some of the things that uh, I, I've been talking about. Reigning in life through one Christ Jesus. It says, um, the Bible says, if we suffered with him, we shall also reign with him. In 2 Timothy 2.12, it says, uh, in Re Re Revelation 5, it says, we shall also reign on earth. It's about reigning, people. It's about reigning. He reigns forever. So we have to understand that there are two categories of people. We have to learn what it means to reign in life. Are you a person that makes a choice to reign? Are you somebody that rejects ability? Are you somebody that rejects ability or you respond to abilities? Those are the things we want to find out today. So you're making a choice. I want to reign in this life. How can I reign? I will give you five simple choices to reign in life. Five choices. You've got to know this truth for you to reign in life. You see, most of what we need to do is very basic, it's very ordinary. It doesn't require so much energy, it just requires the ability to act on them. What am I talking about? You see, those are ordinary things to do. Anybody can do the ordinary. Anybody can do the ordinary. You can be kind to somebody. You can speak into somebody's life and their lives will be changed. You can speak as a king in life. You can speak as a king in life. You can come to somebody that is facing a life in that situation and you declare life to them. These are simple things you can do. It does not require a lot. It just requires you to make a decision a choice but this is the main issue the main issue is if we go back and read what it says in Daniel chapter 7 we go back and read Daniel chapter 7 you discover something very unusual about the scripture first of all you've got to realize you are extraordinary 
you are one of a kind. You are a unique being. There is nobody like you in this world. Hallelujah. So you have to understand what you're called to do, what you're called to reign in in life. You are, ex you are a unique person. So you learn to individualize yourself. You've got to individualize yourself. The, sec the other thing you have to celebrate, your responsibility. Whatever responsibility you have taken, it changes everything. You see? Now, a lot of people do not understand that the church of Jesus Christ is a living body, a, a people, not a building, not a name on a denomination. It's more than that. It is living and breathing people. Maybe I can focus tomorrow on defining the living church tomorrow so that you understand what it means. The purpose of the church is to train you for the kingdom purpose, to reign over a situation, to set others free and bring them into the reign of God on this earth. I hope you understand what I'm talking about today. Hallelujah. Um, I hear this is somebody says he says uh, use me in the healing is pastor Ellis bless you thank you for joining me now uh, one thing I have to say to people when they talk about uh, healing ministry I I really do not have a healing ministry I have life in me that's why when you are sick the life comes to you and they call it healing so I really do not have a healing ministry like they said uh, no, a lot of times those are tags that people give but I do not subscribe to those tags I will never let people's description become what defines me I, are you hearing me thank you Nisha you can share your testimony with us I'll read it <laughs> now People say you have a healing ministry. I really don't have a healing ministry. I heal the sick. What, what do you mean by you don't have a healing ministry? Don't you heal the sick? Now, this is what the world has put you in a box and called you a healing minister or a healing evangelist. I don't share that at all. I'm a king in life. I, I'm a king over death. So when death comes around me, life has to overcome. When darkness comes, light light shines hallelujah i hope you understand where we're coming from so when we're talking about reigning in life we are talking about having absolute dominion over the enemy's power are you hearing me we are life givers we give life to people so we need to understand so somebody asked me once so if you say you don't have a healing ministry what ministry do you have i i made it very clear to them I said, I have a Jesus ministry, a ministry of reconciling people back to God. The other thing about healing the sick, prophesying, that's not really ministry. That is actually functioning in the ministry to reconcile people back to God. So when we come to them, we bring the life of God if they need that life. If they need a word for direction, we give them a word. Let the Jesus in you, the unlimited Christ in you, just come out of you. Why are you going to limit him to only healing? Are you hearing me? <laughs> see, so, thank you, thank you, Nana, for, for sharing that. You see, we do not really, we do not actually, when they talk about apostolic and prophetic ministry, um, I, let me address that also. This is turning to a Q&A, but let me address that. Uh, there is nothing like an apostolic ministry. Uh, an apostle is a function of, in the body in the kingdom to set things in order that's what it is you set with a specific instruction to go hallelujah I'm loving this I see some amazing thing <laughs> people are getting healed thank you Nisha for sharing that wonderful testament of your grandmother being healed I love that so we are talking about understanding when it's a prophetic ministry there really there is really nothing like a prophetic ministry there is the ministry of reconciliation where Jesus the Bible says a testament of Jesus Christ the spirit of prophecy so I'm not against the prophets or the prophetic ministry you know if that makes you happy fine but what I'm trying to emphasize to you is don't let people limit the Jesus in you that's my whole point the Jesus in you can prophesy. The Jesus in you can heal the sick. The Jesus in you can speak into people and they become successful. It's a ministry of life. It's a ministry of reconnecting people to God's unlimited power. That's what we're talking about. 
So don't let people limit the Jesus in you. That's a big, big problem. They will tell you, well, this is your ministry. No, it's functional. I function, sometimes I function as a pastor, sometimes I function as an evangelist. So I just let Jesus and me come to the people. So that's what I'm talking about. So, but I, I mentioned that um, on Friday about what, what problems we have been facing has been to actually accept in totality what Jesus has done for us. We have been given such a status that it's almost unbelievable to people. Most people cannot understand why we talk the way we talk. We are kings in life. So I'm talking today about making a choice to reign in life. You see, you can write this down. I've said this to you many times. I will never allow people's revelation to become my limitation. Never allow a revelation to become a cap or a limitation to all that Jesus wants to do in you. So in all the words, serve in whatever capacity you're given, you're, you're, you're told to serve in the church. You know, don't get into a position of things. Just let Jesus in you flow out. If it's cleaning the toilet, clean the toilet. If it's saying hello to somebody, say hello to somebody. Why limit Jesus in you? Just let Jesus reign through you. We are kings in life. So tomorrow I'll be dealing uh, with a difference. So how, uh, the question is, how do you take out the Jesus in you to do that? No, I just care about people. I love people. You, you can't be in this. Um, we can be in this and not love people. Never allow what people have said about you. Don't let, let their description become what defines you. Don't let what, how people describe you become what defines you. Don't do that. What defines you is who God says you are. That's who you really are. You are more than what you do. You are more than all those things. You are more. You are spirit. You, are, you and God are connected. You are one. So you are the object of God's love. And the purpose of Jesus coming was to come into a human flesh and give life to that human flesh. Are you, are you with me? So I am in the category of people that choose. I am in the category of people that shine. I'm in the category of people that respond to abilities, that are doers. I am a believer, I believe. So I hope you're following what I'm talking about today. You are called to do something much more than what you have been told. Be a king first and then reigning as a lot easier. Reign in life. It's a choice. Remember this. You have the commission to go. You have a, it's a choice. Jesus said go and you go. Oh, wonderful. Hallelujah. Bethan says is sharing the limitless Jesus in Ecuador. I love it. I love it. That's what I'm talking about. Let the world see Jesus in you and through you. That's what I'm talking about. Let them behold a Jesus in you. Without limitation. Don't come and give them a limited Jesus. Just said, hey, whatever you need, God has a supply to meet it. You have the commission. You have been commissioned to go. That's number one. The choice to win. You have been commissioned to go. Believe that. When he sent you to go, he meant go. He is backing you up. The Bible says in John 15, he said, you haven't chosen me, but I have chosen you and I've anointed and appointed you to go. So you have the commission to go. You've been commissioned to go. Number two, you have the intelligence to know. Are you hearing me? You have the intelligence to know. You see, there is something that religion has put in people, and it's like the bonsai tree, the Japanese tree that they cut around, and the See, the thing about a bonsai tree, it looks so little. It looks so little. 
Why does it stay little? Because they keep trimming it and are making it a nice little decorative tree. You go to a Japanese home, they have those little bonsai trees. You know, this little cute thing that it grow, over the years it's been growing and growing, but they keep cutting it and it never reaches its full potential. But then you think about a sequoia tree. A sequoia tree just grows and grows because the environment allows it to grow. So in other words, you have the intelligence to know. You have the intelligence to know. Number three, you have the talent to grow. The sequoia tree grows because it knows. What does that mean? You have the intelligence to know. Read the word of God for yourself. You will discover amazing truths that will change your world. Are you hearing me? You see, the difference between the bonsai and the sequoia is environment. It's allowed to grow and the other one is trimmed and cut up and look cute. You're not called to look cute. You're called to reign in life. Hallelujah. You have the talent to grow. So number one, you're commissioned to go. Number two, you have the intelligence to know. You're smart. Don't let anybody tell you you're not smart. God doesn't make dummies. He makes people like himself. If you are a seed of God, you have greatness already planted in you. Are you hearing me? You have greatness already planted in you. I know I, I'm looking at some of the scriptures I, I, I want to read. I, I, I'm so excited about it. I believe what God says about me. I have the intelligence to know. I used to remember those days people would tell me, you can't understand the Bible because you need the priest, you need this person to explain it to you. No. If you cannot understand the words, get a dictionary and know, discover what it actually says about you. You have the intelligence to know. You can read it for yourself. <laughs> Are you hearing me? God never makes dummies. God doesn't make unintelligent people. If, if, if somebody ever told you you're unintelligent, then they're saying that God is unintelligent. No, God makes people like himself. And God is the master strategist. He is, he is everything. Hallelujah. So for you to reign in life, it's a choice you make. So number one, you're commissioned to go. Believe that. It's a choice. I can say to myself, I know I'm commissioned to go. Number two, I have the intelligence to know. I can know facts. I can know those things. Number three, I have the talent to grow. God has endowed you with talents to grow. Are you with me? You have talent to grow into. There are things that need to be explored in you that you have not even tested it. There are things that God has prepared for you on the inside of you that when you discover it, the world will marvel at you just the same. Are you with me? You have the talent to grow. Don't say you have nothing. What you have in you, it's like gold at your doorstep. You have to polish that gold. Nobody will buy your gold if you haven't polished that talent. You have the talent to grow from glory to glory. You can grow today. You have the talent to grow. God has invested in you his very best. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7, it says, For we have the treasures in earthen vessel, so that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. In other words, God has already invested talent in you you have the talent to grow you have the intelligence to know things you are smarter than what people have given you credit even what you think you can do you can do anything the Bible says you can do all things you have the intelligence to know and you also you have the talent to grow number four you have abilities to sow. You have abilities to sow. In other words, you have abilities that you can invest in other people and in the world. You have abilities. Don't say you have nothing. There is something in you that is so unique about you that sets you apart from 
everybody else. Your significance, what makes you significant is the difference that I discern in you. We are not clones. God is a God of variety. He's made us so amazing and wonderful and we have to discover what our abilities are. We have abilities. You got to say that to yourself. I have abilities to, to sow. The world needs the abilities that God has put in me. Are you hearing me? Hello, Katrina. God bless you. You have abilities to invest in other people. That is one of the things that sometimes when I talk to people, you say, I hate seeing wasted potential. When I see people complaining, oh, I have nothing, I said, that's a good place to start. Because God created things, things that are not from the things that are, uh, from the things that are, from things that are not. In other words, there is another dimension that you are supposed to step into and pull from there. You can do that. You can do that. You have the abilities to sow. I didn't say you have the ability. You have abilities. You have abilities to sow. Believe that. I'm talking about five choices to reign in life. Five choices. Believe in those choices and you will have an extraordinary life. I say to myself every day, what can I do? I have abilities. I have talents. I have intelligence to know. I have the talent to grow. I have the abilities to sow to people. I believe that about you. Don't tell me I have nothing. What do you have in your hands? You see, you're never responsible for what you don't have. You have abilities. You have ab Make an inventory of your abilities. Don't make an inventory of your needs. Make an inventory of the seeds, abilities you can sow into the world. Can you speak? Can you decorate? Can you beautify a life with your words? Can you sing? Can you paint? Can you, you can communicate this wonderful message in any form or any way. Are you, hear, are you hearing me? You have abilities. In whatever you do, if you're writing, write, let the glory of God be revealed in that. If you're singing, sing so that the glory of God can be revealed in that. If you're in business, be in business so that the glory of God can be revealed in that you have abilities to sow into the world. And do you know what happens when you sow? You reap a harvest. You reap a harvest. Do you understand? You have abilities. You are more than your feelings. Yesterday, I was teaching in church, and I say to them, you have to understand that you are not your emotion. You are not your feelings. You are more than your feelings. You are more than your body. You are spirit. And your spirit and God's spirit are connected and you're one. So you are more than your emotions or your, your, your physical body. You are spirit. So know that your abilities, make an inventory of them and get ready to sell. Get ready to sell those abilities. Because it never increases until you sow those abilities. You have the abilities to sow. Hallelujah. You see, God never blesses anything that you're not, you're not doing. He blesses the works of your hand. Get busy. Write those books. And uh, we, I, I have some wonderful news to, to share. We have, uh, we have new uh, books that are coming out. We already have them out. But for those that so um, $500, what we want to do is we want to we just, as a thank you for sowing $500 for, towards the trip, we want to give you uh, three books. Three books. We're going to send them to you uh, by email. For those that so, just put your email and so 500. That way we can really get a lot of things going. And uh, then the, those that want to so $1,000, we have, we have eight books to give you. Eight books. Brand new books. We don't have them printed yet, but we have those books ready now for you we can just email them to you. You would love them. They are great books. They will bless you. Hallelujah. Now, we have about 40-something books already written. So we want to make them available to you. You would love them. Now, hear this. You have the commission to go. You've been commissioned to go. You have the talent, the intelligence to know. You have the talent to show, to grow. 
You have the talent to grow. You have the abilities to, to sow. Number four. Number four. Let me talk about that a little bit. What am I saying? Abilities. Responsibility. Respond today to the abilities God has put in you. There are treasures in you. That's why you are unique. You're not a copy of somebody else. You're unique and you're one of a kind. You are one of a kind. You see, the sequoia tree goes up to over 340 feet. Like that. That quickly. The tap roots. The tap roots of the sequoia tree just grows. But the bonsai tree, the tap roots, is restricted. It's not allowed to grow into its greatness. That's what happens to the bonsai tree. You see, because it is kept in that mindset, that captivity, it never fulfills its greatest potential. But we can do things differently now. We can understand the abilities inside of us. We can grow because we have talent in us. You are talented. Now, listen, go back and listen to some of the things I taught several weeks ago or several months ago. One of the things is about unleashing God's creative nature in you and then we move from that to creating a brand new world. And now I'm teaching you how to be in charge. How to be in charge. Choices for people who reign in life. You have number one choice, make the choice to go. You are commissioned for that. Number two choice, you have the intelligence to know. Know things. Discover things. Make discoveries. Hallelujah. Explore things. Share things with people. Don't be afraid of learning something new. You are in charge. Are you hearing me? I'm saying this because I love you guys so much and I wish you guys could be sitting here with me and I can share this with you so that you can get a hold of what I'm talking about. And again, we're making an offer for those that can sow. We have brand new books we're going to send to you. Brand new books. I have a book of quotations from a lot of my messages. You just have a complete book of quotations. And I have what I call, we have what I call um, Kingdom Talk. We want to make some of those books available to those that will sow $500. And then for those that sow um, $1,000, we want to make more books available to you. I already explained that. But this is what I want to, make, we want to do. We want to put those things in your email. You just click on it, PDF. It's faster than shipping the books to you. If you can sew those things, I mean, we have eight books for those that want to sew $1,000 today. $1,000 today. And we have three books for those. These are brand new books. You haven't, you haven't seen them. We've had them ready. But I wanted to surprise you guys. You know what? We'll add some bonus if you guys can do it today. I love you guys. But now, hear this. You have the abilities to sow. You have the abilities to sow. The Bible says, what good is having faith without action? Don't say, I have abilities, but I'm going to pray about it. No. Get up and act on it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen to me. Today is going to be a different day for you. You have abilities. You have abilities. Respond to those abilities. Remember what I said? There are two categories of people. They are winners and losers. They are those that make excuses and are those that take action. They are those that whine about how bad things are and they are those that just shine because they know that they are the light. They are those who reject ability and complain and curse the darkness when they are the light. And then they are those who respond to abilities that do not curse the darkness but a turn on the light within them. We've got to make a choice. I choose to reign in life. I choose to reign in life. Hallelujah. I choose. I'm not going to sit back there and try to make plans. You see what I say to people? I love planning. I love setting goals. But most importantly, I like taking action. Let's make this a deal. 
Take action within 24 hours of having the idea and see what happens to you. You see, a friend of mine once said to me, um, he wrote a book. He says, action knows no season. In other words, there is no season for action. Action is every season. You can act now and begin to see things happen. So what do you do? Make a choice to reign in life. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping you folks. I hope it's helping you. Reign in life. So what do we do? This is what the Bible says. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Now, you have to understand that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Hallelujah. You've got to understand that. That's what it tells you in the Bible. But 1 Timothy chapter 4, I want to read that to you. Because I know you people like me to load you with scriptures. I have tons of them. But today, I just want to talk to you because I know that you are... You have abilities to sow. You've got to say to yourself, I have abilities to sow. I have abilities to sow. You have abilities. You have things that you have in your life that you can sow today. You have things you can sow. You have abilities to sow. Don't whine, shine. Don't complain, display. Become a person that knows how to get things done. You have an idea, run with it. Who knows, that might become the next billion dollar idea. Hallelujah. You have abilities to sow. Can I tell you something about abilities? It knows no age. Ideas knows no age. You can be two years old with a brilliant idea. You can be 200 years old with a brilliant idea. Ideas knows no age. There are certain things you cannot do physically because your strength is failing. But ideas does not need that. Ideas, nothing can stop an idea which time has come. The right idea at the right time produces the right impact. We are called to impact the world. Hallelujah. Are you with me? I hope you guys are, 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 are flowing with me this morning. I'm talking about reigning in life as king, being in charge. Choices to reign. The choice to reign in life. How do I reign? I'm not going to be looking at my circumstance. I'm not going to be looking at what people say things about me or what people, what decisions people are making. I want to make sure that the decisions made are the decisions made by me, not by other people. I will not allow other people's decision to, de to decide what I do. What do I do? I make decisions based on where I'm going. I hope you understand that. So, what am I saying? Number four, you have the abilities to sow. Number five, you have the importance to show. You have the importance to show. You have the importance to show. You see, let's not become like the bonsai tree. That has been reduced to just aesthetics. Just something beautiful to be admired. Let's be like the sequoia tree that is a giant in the forest. Hallelujah. Let's not become something that's cute and beautiful that everybody's keeping there. Let us become something that is vibrant and impacting others. I hope you're following me. I hope you're following me. You have the importance to show. You have the importance. You are important to God. You are important to your world. And you are important to you too. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So when I talk about this, you have to understand that you have the importance to show. What, what makes you important? Is the one who lives in you. I've heard some people say, oh, I'm not important. That's rubbish. Why would God send you and you're not important? You are a royal ambassador. You are a royal ambassador. Hallelujah. See, we, we've got to become people that understand that we are not there to look cute. <laughs> you see, why is, it, is the bonsai tree so little and so cute? I tell you why. Because its roots have been tempered and have been trimmed so that it cannot grow solid roots. 
you have the importance to show because you are a royal priest. You are a king that has chosen to serve. Whatever we have belongs to the king. And the king gives us the privilege and the audacity to act on his behalf. You are in charge. You're royalty. See, I'm not a preacher. I'm a king with a message. I make it clear to people all the time. I am not a preacher. I'm a king. I'm a king. I'm a king. Because I'm a king, I reign in life. If people respond to this message, they have the importance to show. You are important to God. You're vital to his plan. There are people that you have been called to help. Are you hearing me? I want to read a scripture in Daniel. I want to read a scripture in Daniel. Um, this, this, this is important to me. <laughs> I like this. This is from Daniel chapter 7. I like the scripture. It tells you in verse 21 and verse 22. I want, to read, I want you to read. I want us to read this. And I beheld. You see there is a war going on in the heavenlies. There is a war going on in the heavenlies. And this is the problem. This is the problem with that war. Let me just get myself a bit to where I'm supposed to be. Let me get myself in the proper order. It says, verse 21, And it beheld, and the same horn, which is, which connotes authority, or Satan was waging war with the saints and overpowering them until the ancient of days came and judgment was passed in favor of the saints of the Most High One. And the time arrived when the saints took possession of the kingdom. Now, you got to read that again. Remember, in the Old Testament, that was an unusual word to be used. To say the word saints in the Old Testament is not a common word. In the Old Testament, you can find, especially in the book of Psalms, in the Psalms, you can find a lot of it talked about the saints, the saints. But most of what you find about the saints is in the New Testament. Now, hear this. The saints took possession of the kingdom. Who took possession? The saints. You were in charge. We took possession of the kingdom. I hope you're following me. They took possession of the kingdom. And then, let's read verse 27. And the kingdom, it says, and the kingdom, or the, then the sovereign, the dominion, and the greatness of all the kingdoms under the whole heaven will be given to the people of the saints, of the most high one. His kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom, and all the dominion will serve and obey him. See, this is the problem. Do you know that there's a war going on in the minds of the believers? That's where the problem is. There's a stronghold where we are not allowed to reign as kings in life. So we have been reduced to becoming priests that serve the glory and not kings that carry the glory. You see, a lot of times I hear people talk a lot about the priesthood of the believer. The, I always smile when they talk about those things. I smile. I said the idea wasn't priesthood from the beginning. The idea was kingship, was dominion, not serve, serving. It was dominion. When you said have dominion means being in charge. 
But why is it that the horn is making war against the church? And how is it making war? See, the Bible says we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in the heavenly places, in the high places. What is that? Mindsets in different places. Secular humanism. All those kind of mindsets that is coming to even to the church. Judaistic Christianity, which is which has so much hierarchy, we don't we we have to wait for someone to tell us. I believe in order and ranking, but I believe in understanding the new dimension of the kingdom, a kingdom of priests. Are you with me? Are you with me? We have been given dominion because we are the ones that speak for the ancient one. Hallelujah. You see, we have moved from being servants to sons who choose to serve. We have moved from priesthood to kingship. Kings who make a, a, a decision to serve. I'm a king serving. A priest never has glory. They always serve the glory. Do you know why the priest could not enter into the Holy of Holies? Because kings were meeting. The Bible says, for the glory thereof. When kings meet, priests cannot operate. In other words, it's called the law of the inner sanctum. When kings are having conversation, priests cannot come in. That's why for you to be in the New Testament family, you have to be royalty first and then priesthood. You are a royal priest, not priest first, royal that gives you access to the glory. Priesthood is your service to the king. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. So when we talk about, when we are talking about this, people that are still thinking and battling the mindset of a king and saying, well, don't you think you're being so arrogant? No, it's confidence because we know we are in charge. I've made a choice today. I am ruling and reigning in life. I am ruling and reigning in this life. You see, I say today, for everybody that sows $500, we're sending you book. If you send it today, we're going to make sure by the end of the day, those that send the, the $500 as a seed for our mission trip, send it to us Go to Christlove.org. We're going to release those books to you. These are brand new books. We're going to release them to you immediately. The moment it comes in, we'll send it out to you. And then for those that can sow $1,000 today, we have eight books to give you. In fact, I'm going to make the deal even sweeter. For those that are sowing $500, we're going to give you four books emailed to you immediately today. These books... You might, you might buy them for a certain amount, but the value of it is more than anything you can ever imagine. The value in these books is what more than the $500, I can assure you. I can assure you. If you really want to value the, the, the knowledge, the wisdom in it, it's more than that. But we want to make that available. We haven't made it available anywhere in the world. But it's ready for you. But working on it. It's available to you. Go to Christlove.org. Sow a seed today. We're going to release those books to you today. Amen. So let us know you, you're interested in that. I'll make that ready for you. I, I, I like the series. We have 12 volumes of one of the books called Kingdom Talk. It's a different dimension of talk. Are you with me? We have another series called Golden Seeds. It's simply a lot of my quotes taken together and then sent out to you. Hallelujah. See, let me finish this. I'm talking about, you have to realize you're a unique person. You are unique just the way you are. God made you special just the way you are. You are first class all the way. Never allow anybody to tell you anything differently. I know some people come and tell, well, you know, they have, you know, they, they have attained certain heights in God and things like that. I'm not one of those people. I'm trying to tell you, you have attained certain heights in God because you are the object of love. You are the object of love. 
Now, I know some of you want to sow. I, I just felt in my spirit that some of you say, I can't sow uh, uh, 500. But you know what? Sow whatever God tells you to sow. You know, we want to make sure we can push and get these things ready for our trip. We really want to be a blessing to the world. Hallelujah. And that's where your partnership comes in. I hope you understand it. So let me get this across to you. I'm talking about you are unique, one of a kind. You are more than a bonsai tree. You are not there for aesthetic value. You are there to shake and move the earth. Hallelujah. Hear this. You are commissioned to go. You have the intelligence to know. Number three, you have the talent to grow. Yes, you're talented. A fish looks stupid on land. Put it on water, you discover genius. A bird might struggle under the water. Put it in the air, it flies. You need to know the place of your natural brilliance. Once you understand that, it changes everything. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? So I am very excited today. We are going to be doing something amazing. Something amazing today. Just I want to partner with us today. Let's get some things going. It is going to be a glorious, a glorious day. So I'm, I'm giving you five choices you make terrain believe that you are commissioned to go number two you have the intelligence to study things to discover things to know for yourself don't allow people that would come and put limiting thoughts in your mind to tell you oh you can't do this let me tell you some people come to you and tell you they had a dream they had a vision they had this about you you know what i say to people that's fine Thank God you had these dreams. But guess what? I have the intelligence to know. Know the place of your natural brilliance. Your natural brilliance. Where you shine without sweat. Go there and you will succeed. Hallelujah. So, number three. You say... I have the talent. I can grow. I can act. I can run. I can sing. I can sew. I can design things. I can build a house. I can design something amazing. You have the talent to grow. Let your talent push and expand what you do. Are you hearing me? You have the talent to grow. You have the talent to grow. Number four, you have the abilities. You have abilities to sow. You have abilities to sow. You really have abilities to sow. Don't tell me, well, you don't understand. I have nothing. No, you've got something that somebody somewhere in the world needs. You have abilities to plant. When you plant those abilities, you get a harvest coming in. What ability do you have? Don't stay there and die in the vine. Don't just be stuck in a rut. Don't be like that. Become a person that is excited about life. Life is big, rich, and wonderful. We have a living hope. We sure do have a living hope. Are you hearing me? And then you have the importance to show. You are royalty. You are royalty. You are royalty. Believe that about yourself. See, there are certain things about you that others don't know. Even your family does not know. Your parents do not know. You can discover this and then go ahead and live it out. The world is a big and beautiful place. They are waiting for you to come out and display what you're called to do. Somebody said to me, oh, maybe God called me for this little thing. I said, now... See, God doesn't make small plans. You do. When God takes you, he takes you from small dreams. He tells you, give up your small dreams and take on my big dreams. That's how God works. God never talks about limitations. You notice how God speaks. He says, ask anything, no limitation. Whosoever, no limitation. Anyone, no limitation. That's how God speaks. That's how I know it's God. All things are possible to anyone. That's God speaking. And I have Elena, Ellen. It's such a joy to have you today. It's such a joy 
to have that. That is my, my sister from Norway. Hallelujah. That's a daughter and a sister. Hallelujah. Now, hear this. You have the talent. You have the talent to grow. You have the intelligence to know. You have the abilities to plant. And you have the importance to show. Don't ever let people diminish the great things God has put in your life. Are you hearing me? God does not speak with limitations. People do. God does not speak with limitations. People do. You see, people will tell you, you can't do this. The Bible says you can do all things. Think like God. You have the importance to show. Hello. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I'm so excited today because I know that your vocabulary is changing. You have the talent to grow into. You have the intelligence to know and discover things. You have been commissioned to go. Make those choices today and you will reign in life. You will reign in life. You will reign in life. Don't tell me, oh, you don't understand. I have this. I have that. Listen, you make an inventory of your talent. Polish them up. You will grow. You have seeds to sow. You have amazing things to do. Hello, Godwin. How are you? So what am I talking to you about? You have to develop your spiritual senses to see more. To know more. Look at the unseen. Look at the unseen. You are the living expression of God. Get yourself so filled with all of his fullness. The Bible says in Matthew 19 verse 26. With man it is impossible not with God. God has elevated you and invited you to his class of being. Think about that. He has elevated you and invited you to his class of being. If you can only believe anything is possible. The Bible says, you are sons of God. As many as receive to them, he give the power to become sons of God. In other words, you are in the class of God. You are in the class of God's being. You are in God's class of being. In, in other words, God's resources are yours now. They are available to you. All things are yours. Question, how do I harness those resources for the glory of God? That is our main question. I've given you five things today that you can do. Your limitation is what you believe. Are you hearing me? Psalm 78 tells us that they limited the Holy One. They tempted Him by limiting Him. Do you know when we limit God, we are tempting Him? How big can you dream? How big is God? How big is possible? How big is your desire? Proverbs 23, 7. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So make the choice to think today. Big like God. I hope this is helping you. I hope this is helping. Make a choice to think today like God. Let me tell you something. Every problem is your opportunity for promotion. No system ever designed by man can make you a failure. The only reason you fail is when your focus is broken or when you quit after you make a mistake. Don't you quit and don't you, don't you have your focus broken. Stay focused and great things will happen to you. I want to perceive God's plans. I want to believe the lamb paid for me. I want to receive the lamb. I want to believe the man. I want to achieve my stand and I want to take charge and relieve the land. I hope this is helping you today. Today, I just wanted to come straight to you and talk to you and let you know 
that you have a choice to be in charge. Nothing happens in your world without your permission. Start taking charge today. Did you get what I said? Nothing happens in your world without your permission. Start taking charge today. In other words, make choices to win. Make choices to win. I said number one choice is very simple. The choice to go. Number two, the choice to know. Number three, the choice to grow. Number four, the choice to seed or plant. Number five, the choice to show. I pray that this can help you. And again, I want to tell you, I want to thank you, those of you that have been sowing already for, for the, the trip to Indonesia. We want to make sure we can send you wonderful gifts. Those gifts are coming to you. We want to make them available to you today. If you can sow um, $100, whatever it is, whatever you can sow today to help us get to Indonesia and be a blessing to the nation, we would love to do that. And we can send you those things today. I know that you will be blessed by those books. If what I've been teaching is helpful to you, think about when I really sit down and I, and I really write those things down. It really is a tremendous impact. <clears throat> I want to encourage you today. I know you, we, our time is, is gone really very quickly. And uh, we're coming back tomorrow morning. And the great things are going to keep happening. I hope that this has been a blessing to you today. Five choices you make to reign in life. Did you get that? Did you get that today? Can I go through it again? Number one, make the choice to go. Number two, make the choice to know. You have intelligence. Number three, make the choice to grow. You're talented. Number four, make the choice to sow. You have the abilities. Number five, make the choice to display, to show. Because you are, have the importance. You have the importance. And if you can do that today, you can reign in life through one, Christ Jesus. I want to say I love you, and I'm glad that you joined me today for this time of Daily Boost. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Please go to our website christlove.org and please consider sowing an incredible seed today i know i know you folks are generous you you know the people i talk to i know they have the heart to want to reach people you guys are wonderful so go to our website christlove.org and sow a seed we are thinking souls people around the world need to hear this the bible says how can they hear except we tell them and how can we tell them except we are sent. So you might not come, but you can send us. And that means you're coming along with us with your seeds. So for those that saw a thousand, we're going to give you eight books today. Those books, we haven't printed them out anywhere else. And those that saw 500, we give you, we're going to give you four books, I said. In fact, we're going to make those that saw a thousand, we're going to give you nine books. Just, I want to add one extra one. And then, for those that sow 200, we're going to give you a good gift. Uh, 100, we're going to give you a good gift. Whatever you can sow, feel free to sow. We want to be a, a blessing to you too. The idea is, we want to give you something that will enhance what you do for Jesus. Amen? Amen? God, I thank God for you. Uh, for all of you that have listened to me today, share this with others. I want to make sure we can have a big family of people that are hungry for more of God. Amen? I want to say, I bless you, I love you, and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. It is going to be explosive tomorrow. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for joining me today. Wow, wow, wow. We had a great concert yesterday with Sam Soft. Tremendous people were there. A lot of, a lot of musicians from different parts of the world came to celebrate his, his wife and the foundation. Sharon K. Foundation. And we want to be partners with them too. But God bless you, and please... Thank you for your support. I know your, your heart is to do the will of God. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.